that you reflect on your magnificent, unexpected, historic life. What, what regret is there if you had your life to live again, knowing what you now know that you didn't know at the time, what would you have done differently? What is a regret? What is a cautionary note for people watching this all over the world that you would say, Michael, I, I just think I might have done this differently. Only you would frame a question with the clarity, depth, and implications of the question to elicit the answer. And I thank you and bless you for affording me this moment on your show uh, to advance a thought. There used to be a writer in the 19, um, late 1950s, early 60s named Alexander King, a very intriguing guy who uh, wrote an autobiography. And I always loved the title of it. And the title of his autobiography was, quote, I should have kissed her more. Hmm. Close quote. You can look up Alexander King and see who he was. And I should have kissed her. I should have kissed her more. My regrets. Yes. And I have many. Okay, let's do three. And I, do, uh, <laughs> I don't believe in people who say they have no regrets, that all their decisions were correct. You know, they had 17 on the table and the dealer was showing 16 and they asked for a card. One of the great joys of my life this year was you taught me to play poker. Or blackjack. 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 I taught you how to play blackjack. You taught me to play blackjack. And you beat me. <laughs> I did. Beginner's luck. But yeah, that was one of the great... That's one of the regrets of my life. All right, fair enough. Well, let's Another talk. regret is I should have kissed her more. I should have spent more time pursuing things yes. that would fulfill Eliot's destiny as opposed to an endless number of clients. I regret that I never had the chance to say goodbye to my mother. My mother died of an unexpected massive heart attack in her 70s. And we never had a chance to say goodbye. Um, I would spend the next 20 years with my father, never leaving him, never ending a phone call, without embracing him and sharing with him how much I loved him. I did, I was able to say goodbye consciously and lovingly to my father. He heard me express my appreciation for the best man I ever knew. So. The second regret has to do with not being able to say goodbye to mom. And the man that who I know today so freely and comfortably says to friends, I love you, uh, that man was born in part from not having the opportunity. Yeah. Well, do another uh, regret or two that if you had your life to live over again. Um, I'm going to frame this one in the sense that it's not all about I, me, my, mine. It's not about Elliot Mintz. We are all in it together. I frame this for whoever is viewing us in the hopes that they might take some of this and apply it to their trip and their journey. That's I'm not important. There. Um, I should have been retired when I was 50. I got carried away with the experience. For you were on a pretty heady, uh, pretty heady boat. I was in a fast adrenaline rush. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't learned to slow down and meditate and uh, be grateful for that which has already been given to me, for the fact that the race had already been won. Yes. To take some time to not only reflect upon that, but to to see that proverbial. Um, uh, ranch and hillside where the marigolds grow wild, where somebody was waiting at the front door 
where I could smell a home-cooked meal in the stove, where I would take the saddle off the horse and the albatross off my shoulders. Don't wait too long. So, it's the other part to be here now, and I should have kissed her more. If both of those thoughts resonate in your brain, the extrapolation is, get on with it. Get on with it. We're sitting in my house in Mulholland Drive in a cliffhanger. If God shakes his shoulders, we slide down the hillside. Don't wait too long. Whatever it is that you want to share with another, don't wait till Friday night. Express it today. If you have had it with your work, get out of your work. You'll find another way to earn the money where you can look at yourself in the mirror. And the money is not going to buy you the freedom and the peace of mind that you're looking for. Don't wait too long. Well, Elliot Mintz has gotten on with this life in a way that's extraordinary and inspirational. I'm honored to be here with you. I'm honored to have talked to you not only about your professional life, but about your core beliefs, your core philosophies. I think people watching this will have a tiny insight into the unique dynamic that I've had the privilege to get to know. That dynamic is the dynamic of LA events. Thank you all. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I, uh, as you know, I didn't have the best day. And I came up here with a little bit of a dark mood. But I quickly, as soon as I start talking to you, I get very energized. And, uh, you know, sometimes you and I will talk on the phone for an hour or two at night, and it feels like four or five minutes. How are you, how are you feeling in your own life? Yeah. About your profession, about your personal life? Well, I, uh, Elliot, I am concerned. Um, I'm concerned about the kinds of questions that you raise. When you speak to the world about getting on with it, I try to ask myself if I have been mindful of your wisdom. You know, I'm impacted by what you say a great deal, whether it's about giving money to homeless people or uh, over-involvement with my work or so forth. So I, I take your messages both in a global and macro sense and in a micro sense very personally. You impact me a great deal. I think often about things you've said for days afterwards. You deflected and you sent it back to Elliot. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at Michael. Are you happy? Well, I am, uh, generally. And... Uh, I generally have meaning in my life, but I am also mindful that I am closer to the end than the beginning now, as you wisely pointed out. And, uh, you know, I don't know if the professional accomplishments that I've had, if having made Michael Jackson famous or, you know, uh, Vanna White famous or any number of any other countless celebrities is is enough. When I view it again, some of the deeper, more penetrating spiritual questions that you pose. So uh, you've given me a lot to think about. Look in my eyes. I want you to take this one with you. All right. You are revered. You are respected in terms of your profession. Your extraordinary accomplishments, far more than mine. More so, more so. You're one of the best people I have ever met, ever known. And in ways that you will never know, I have learned more from you than you have learned from me. My wish, and I am so certain that the people who view this, 
who know you, who are discovering you on television, have so much love for you. Let them love you. God bless you. Give me a hug.